Hey, what's happening, guys? We are back again. Looking at the old Gibson Skylark. Yep, I got it out of the uh, out of the box. Just had to move the Tolex out of the way. Tolex is that fake leather covering they put on amplifiers. So last night I came to some conclusions, and I am not sure if I'm going to stick with them or not. So my initial impression on this, again, this is a GA5T Gibson Skylark was that this amp had been modified because I could not find a uh, schematic that matched this because this has three transformers an RCA jack and that tube socket sure looks to me like it's been replaced also, the orange drop capacitors, I'm not sure if they are from that time period. These capacitors, again, don't match with what was on the, um, on the schematic for this thing. But I do have some more information. Brad, the guitologist, on one of his videos, worked on a 1965 Gibson Crestline amp. And will you take a look here? Those tubes match up, and there are one, two, three transformers, an RCA jack, and what's that say? Accessory foot pedal. Well, this matches up perfectly with this. Or does it? Hang on here. Let's see how many... Um, pots there are all right so I counted pots we have a I'm guessing this will be the volume here this looks like it will be a tone control because it is bleeding and that will be the volume that's bleeding some to ground maybe that's the tone control then we have tremolo controls down here. And even if you look right here, it tells you control, 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 control. Four controls. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> so apparently this is some sort of cross between a Crestline and a Sky, Skylark? Yeah, Skylark and a Crestline. Man, if you guys got any information, let me know. Because I don't have any. I was, you just saw all the info I got. So at least I have a schematic that I can work from. Oh, wow. Man, them are on there. I'm just knocking stuff down left and right. Can't get that back behind here. Nope, too big. What about these? Nope, too big. Hang on, I have a tool for this. I just have to go dig it out. This is my Music Nomad. Just a little handy kit for working on guitars got off of amazon it was like 16 dollars. you got the screwdriver handle here or not driver you know however you want to use it and that goes in like that and then you can put your your bits in there of course and then back here you have the most popular nut sizes on guitars 7 16 14 millimeter 12 millimeter half inch there's a 10 millimeter which is as you can see, I use uh, the heck out of it. And you also have a half inch here. But those are not the tools we need for today. The tool we need for today is this little guy here. This is a nice padded uh, soft back for getting the knobs off of guitars. Because it'll just slip right behind like this. Man. 
what don't want to come off? How about you? You want to come off? There's no set screws in these knobs, is there? Uh -uh. They're just tight. We have successfully removed one knob. Let's get in there and just wiggle. Because they are just plastic spline. Of course, they've been on there as long as I've been alive, so. <laughs> I imagine my parts would be just as hard to remove. Oh, I'll keep at it. All right, so before I get to restoring this thing, I got to clean it up. I can't work on it all filthy, so. We are going to start with the uh, knobs, which we're going to take a long overdue bath and dawn dishwashing liquid now for this we have some different things to try first we'll try some windex you know your basic glass cleaner and that's actually not doing a Bad job, so let me see if I can get that cleaned up with the Windex. And if the Windex doesn't work, we'll bring in the Mean Green and a Scotch Bright. The Windex wasn't terrible, it took off all of the loose dirt. So I'm going to move on to something a little more aggressive. But first, this cord is in my way, and this amp is never going to turn on with that cord so I'm gonna get it out of there all right let's try some mean green Yeah, Mean Green's still picking some stuff off of here. It's amazing what a few decades in a barn will do to something. It's also amazing that it's still together. Yeah, that is much better. I think I can live with that. Okay. Next up, gonna hit the pots with some contact. Oh, kaboom! I'm not expecting that to fall over that easily. So, as I was saying, we're gonna hit the pots with some contact cleaner. Because they are looking mighty, mighty rough. Let's switch. Can I get any in there? Yeah. Right there. Little, little contact cleaner makes the medicine go down smoother, right? Then we want to exercise them. Ah, uh, smells good and solventy. Oh, that volume. That volume one feels particularly scratchy and crunchy and begging for another shot. These might all end up having to be replaced. I don't know yet. So if we come down here and take a tour, we'll see what we can see, right? 
So let's uh let's start up at this end. Here are our two input terminals or jacks, whatever you want to call them. And you can see they each have an input resistor right here. And they feed the same place going through this decoupling capacitor, this resistor, now to this wire here to pin number 8 on our first 12AX7. So you can see right there, we've got our capacitor, our resistor we saw on right in. So that was our first control. Our second control here is the loudness, the volume. And you can see that comes from this wire right here and goes over here to pin whatever number that is on that one. So this is going to be our first stage, and it looks like this will be over here for our second stage with the volume. Now we have our tone controls here, treble and bass. And if you look up here, you can see our little network, two resistors, two capacitors. And our volume control is also going over here into this one and then to this one. So they just all go together like that. I think it's called a Baxson doll tone circuit. Then over here we have our depth and frequency, also known as speed controls for the tremolo. And let's see where these wires are going. So this orange one is coming up here, which goes over to here. Which goes through there, through there, through there, through there, over to here. Comes back out into the base. No, it's just grounded there. Okay, so that's just grounded. Then the yellow one comes over here. So it's going through those two to ground, but then it's also coming through that hole, which is taking it to that trans this that transformer there which is listed as PF drive transformer. Then over here on the frequency control, we have a green wire coming to right here. This is going to come over to here. And that is crossing over to here. So that's going back to the same place. And then we have this gray wire, which comes over to here, crosses over here, goes back to this one, and comes out and goes over to there. I mean, if you want to know exactly how the circuit works, it's right there, but. So we're going to start by replacing these two caps. And then we're going to see uh, what happens. We'll, we'll replace these two caps. We'll replace the... Uh, the power cord with a grounded power cord and we'll plug this thing in and uh, go from there that's all we can do for today other than you know i got some more cleaning and stuff to do but I'm sure you guys don't want to see that get our knobs looking you know much better there all right guys i hope you enjoyed this if you did give me a thumbs up feel free to comment share and don't forget to subscribe it's probably going to be a couple weeks till we do another episode on this, as I will have to get those parts in. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out. Peace.